man, it's been a while. I've been traveling around Southeast Asia, haven't uploaded, but about to head over to the Pacific Islands, make some interesting videos there. In the meantime, I wanted to share some footage that many people may find enlightening about daily life in Myanmar during the Civil War, which is one of the worst civil wars in the world. It's been going on for quite a while now, a few years. So I thought I'd share what it's like in the city as a tourist, daily life, etc. Over here in Yangon, which under British colonial occupation was formerly known as Rangoon. Maybe you know Crab Rangoon, that's the name comes from. Anyways, in Yangon, the city is not doing super great at the moment. Uh, obviously, as you'll see in the footage, it's business as usual, more or less, but the economy has really shuttered. A lot of people are not doing so well. And we're going to get into all that, but I figured I'd start with one of the main staples of Yangon Myanmar culture, which is roadside food stands. Uh, because food is very expensive all over the world right now, inflation and all that, uh, a lot of people can't really afford to go to restaurants or buy really anything outside of necessities and some uh, some cheap street food. Uh, unfortunately, uh, even in restaurants, food is pretty expensive. I mean, by Western standards, of course not. It's like five, even up to ten dollars for a dish, which for a Myanmar local, especially one who may have lost their job in the Civil War, that's quite a lot of money. And even still, when you go to a restaurant, the portions are tiny. They're the smallest I've ever seen in my life. I ordered ramen at one restaurant, and I had literally three forkfuls of noodles with some soup in like a, a snack-sized takeout package. There's still some redeeming qualities to the city, uh, mainly the remnants of British colonial uh, architecture. Right here we have the Secretariat, which is the, the main, uh, I guess, downtown hub of former colonial activities. Now they have classics like KFC and some nice uh, traditional food restaurants, Rakhine food restaurants. And a lot of people come here for their Instagram photos. Uh, you know, the, the vibes over in Myanmar, especially downtown, really not too bad. Here's the post office. You would, you would never know that there's a war going on. There's no police, kind of military police everywhere with guns. People aren't walking around scared. It's really just business as usual, 100%. People are walking around buying food, going about the daily lives and I didn't have any any issues at all being a tourist or getting my visa. The only issue I did have was uh, at the airport exchanging money. I went by the official exchange rate. Turns out if you go in the city afterwards, you get like three times as much money. So L for me, but got to enjoy still this beautiful central park. A lot of people just come here to hang out. I mean, there's not really too much else to do. The city's not a beautiful kind of culturally rich place. It's it's nice, but there's not a ton to do. So people come to the park, hang out, take some photos. This is like very much the center of what's happening in Yangon. You see the big buildings, the old colonial architecture, the nicely trimmed hedges. This is, you know, the, the most beautiful part of the city by far. And of course, there's always some tourist restaurants over here. I got a bunch of food at a very empty, as you can see, restaurant. Nobody here. Uh, when I came, they said Lao Wai in Chinese to each other, which means foreigner. Anyways, this is what the city really looks like. As you can tell, not so great. Pretty ugly. A um, lot of, lot of street food stalls and very dirty buildings, which you know is normal in Asia, so I'm not hating at all. It is what it is. The unfortunate thing that was taking place during the trip was massive heat waves. It was like 100 degrees plus Fahrenheit every single day. Really tough. But anyways, now taking a little trip over to Chinatown, walking around. This is the Chinatown markets. A lot of locals will go here, get some cheap stuff, cheap clothing. You know, nice place. But walking around, as you'll see, here especially in Chinatown, the poverty and lack of money circulation throughout the economy is very apparent. A lot of people are just selling random trinkets, uh, a lot of shops have no electricity. Uh, of course, there's some, you know, nice gold stores with fancy people going in and out. And there's definitely a lot going on outside of the main downtown areas in Chinatown. I'm not trying to make it sound like everything's bad. There's a lot of really nice uh, nightlife areas. Some very cool restaurants for foreigners where prices are very affordable. 
and they have nice hip bars where young college kids go decked out in their cool clothes and sometimes designer. And of course, there's Rich District as well, which I'll show you later on in the video, especially by Inya Lake. But in downtown Yangon, as you can see on that building on the right side, really things are just kind of run down. Local economy is not doing too well. People really just fending for themselves, doing uh, small businesses and stuff like that, which is great for them. But sad to see what happened with the war and all that. And of course, if you don't already know, pretty much nobody in Myanmar supports the military government. They all hate them. They clown on them all the time. They're jokes, essentially. And people are essentially waiting for the day that the rebels take over and reestablish some, some normalcy in society over here. But in the meantime, you can walk around, enjoy the vibes. Really uh, not too much to do other than that. Here's a rare instance of some cultural beauty in the middle of the city, Chinese temple, nice place, and even some very beautiful artwork as well on the pillars, which is actually one of the, the most impressive things I've seen in all of Southeast Asia is this one pillar. I was very fascinated by it. Haven't seen anything like that since. All carved out of one block of wood. Impressive. And over there on the right side, you can't see it, but there is the river. Uh, every major city, more or less, that I've been to, the vast majority of them have a river. Yangon also has a river, but they happen to, I uh, don't know why, they happen to block it off with a major freeway, and so regular people can't really go to it. It's all industrialized, there's no nice riverside parks or anything like that. It's just kind of not a very chill place to hang out. But they do have a very beautiful green area in the center of the city. Uh, well, not downtown, a little bit, I'll say about a mile north of downtown, a couple, two and a half kilometers north of downtown. Giant, giant park surrounding a big lake and a temple side lake, as you can see here. Temple, unfortunately closed, but that's life. Apparently, uh, I don't know, maybe no foreigners allowed. It is what it is. And then you can go walk around the hygiene of the water it's not amazing you can smell it from pretty far away it's pretty bad but still a beautiful place to hang out i was going during peak unemployment hours middle of the day so not many people there but a lot of people hang out enjoy the ice cream truck the dilapidated ice cream truck cool bridges and islands met a nice girl here took her on a date walked around and pretty much just making the most of the 100 degree heat wave. And you'll also find in the park some things that are more akin to Western fun opportunities like axe throwing, archery stores, ice cream stands, which is not what you associate with a country in the midst of a civil war. But again, really you would never tell there's a civil war if you went to Yangon. I was worried, actually, that I was going to be subject to extra searching at the airport or military police stopping me and questioning me, searching my phone. None of that. Nothing at all. Just some weird, weirdly placed cameras in the middle of trail paths, as you can see. And really, outside of, you know, some Myanmar restaurants, Rakhine restaurants, which are have some interesting food that you would not experience anywhere else and temples and if you're into it nightlife local nightlife not very many foreigners or foreigner catered activities not that i expect it or look for it there's really not that much to do besides walk around now i'm showing you up in the, the rich area of yangon which is by inya lake i-n-y-a lake but now you're seeing a nice little lakeside walk where people hang out, try to beat the heat under some umbrellas, have some ice cream guys coming around. This is the rich district. So, as you'll see shortly, right on the side of the lake, there's a lot of construction going on, some very expensive villas, as you can, as you can clearly see. Some, probably, government officials or businessmen, people like that. Very stark contrast to 
what you find in the rest of the city. And look at that one, that's just magnificent, beautiful. That's a single person home too, must be nice. Here are some luxury apartments, again, directly facing the lake, nice view. And the lake rules. And right next to the lake, you have Myanmar Plaza, which is one of the biggest malls in all of Yangon. Very nice, trimmed place. And as you can see, lots of big international brands, cool food court with expensive restaurants, lots of stuff to buy. So there is still money in the city. It's not all terrible and poor. But the main attraction of Yangon and one of the gems of all of Asia, Southeast Asia, is the Shwedagon Pagoda, which I will get into now. And here we are inside the Shwedagon Pagoda Pavilion. As you can tell, there's temples everywhere. As far as I can see, there's temples all around. But whoever designed this didn't really take into account the fact that Myanmar, all during, well, six months of the year, I guess, it's like 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 Celsius, and it's a white marble with no shoes or socks allowed. So it's extremely hot. You gotta keep walking around, otherwise your feet will get burned. And mine are already pretty much burning. That's the main temple over there. 99 meters high but for now let's go around the sides and see what other attractions they have to offer well i'll show you around i'm going to read directly from the informational pamphlet about the historical origins of shwadagam pagoda verbatim the origin of shwadagam pagoda materialized in brilliant epoch in buddhist history over 2600 years ago in India, Prince Siddhartha had just attained Buddhahood when he was visited by two brothers, Tapusa and Balika, merchants from Myanmar, who offered a gift of honey cakes. In return, the Buddha personally removed eight hairs from his head and gave these to the two brothers for enshrinement in the native town of Okolapa, which is now in the city of Yangon. On their return, the two brothers presented the Buddha's hairs to the king of Okolapa, who erected the pagoda and enshrined the eight hairs together with relics of previous three Buddhas. The original height of the pagoda was 66 feet. From the 14th century onward, successive monarchs in Myanmar rebuilt or regilded it until Shwedagon reaches present height of 326 feet. I'm gonna read you some stats since given the scale of the temple, it's actually very hard to see just how big it is on video. But up there, you can see there's an umbrella. It looks like an umbrella. That umbrella is 43 feet high, about 15 and a half feet wide. It weighs 5,000 kilos total. And of that weight, one tenth is gold. So 500 kilos of gold in that umbrella. And now on the very top of that umbrella, see if you can zoom in there, is a weather vane. That weather vane is four feet tall, about two and a half feet wide. It weighs 924 pounds and it has 2,000 gems inside. This is a picture of it. And there's the umbrella. And uh, maybe my favorite thing about Shwedagon Pagoda is that they have miles and miles of beautifully kept parks. Look at this. And I've walked down to the lake right now see what they got going on it's actually in the midst of a gigantic heat wave all over Southeast Asia so it feels like well the temperatures I think 96 97 Fahrenheit feels like 120 so nice to get some shade over here Let's see what we can find and this is one of two lakes in the Shwedagon parks. So if I walk across, it's gonna take us directly to the other lake. Very chill day for 100 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> 